So Alexander, welcome to Swiss Map. Uh, so would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and about uh, physics and math that you're doing? Yes, uh, thank you. I, uh, I'm a theoretical physicist and uh, my work uh, lays at the intersection of few areas. Maybe let me start with some introductions that, as you might know, and uh, one of the great successes of say, 20th century physics was the development of these two big frameworks. One is, I would say, it's a quantum field theory. It's a framework which describes uh, scattering of elementary particles. It describes statistical systems, uh, condensed matter systems, and uh, maybe an overarching term will be describes matter. And, uh, and uh, the second uh, framework is uh, gravity or the Einstein theory of relativity, which essentially describes how geometry of space-time uh, reacts on the presence of matter and how it affects matter. So it's interaction matter and space-time. So these are two very big, very successful uh, frameworks. Uh, however, each of them contains its own seed of demise, so to say, or some uh, incompleteness. And uh, since many years already, many physicists are trying and working to make them, to complete them, so to say, and uh, to understand uh, how to turn it into one big complete theory of uh, space time and matter present in a space time. To give you an example, if you take matter and you put a lot of matter at one place, it makes a hole in space time, which is a black hole. And uh, then if you go inside a black hole, there is a singularity. And close to the singularity, Einstein theory does not quite make sense. So you have to substitute it with something. And uh, it's still an open question. What is it something that you substitute with? And uh, one, one uh, remarkable uh, understanding, which is more recent, sort of, let's say, it's the uh, end of uh, the end of 90s, beginning of 2000s, uh, which came from string theory, is uh, these two uh, a priori independent framework of quantum field theory and gravity are uh, um, related through what is known as holography. Holography is a statement of equivalence. So two things are the same, but they are the same in a very uh, non-trivial way. I guess in, in maybe in math it will be some correspondence. Or, um. And so this equivalence between quantum field theory and well, this time quantized theory of gravity was a very active and is a very active field of research and uh, my interest uh, uh, lies in and trying to understand uh, this deep connection between uh, gravity and quantum field theory. Uh, and uh, as a tool, also, I, um, my work is, uh, uses a set of principles which were discovered within quantum field theory, set of axioms in quantum field theory, which was uh, found uh, to be very robust. So, you know, it's a standard work of physicists up to. Uh, for a very long time was that you have some phenomena you want to explain them, you're trying to come up with a, with a theory that explains the data. Uh, now, uh, when you get more and more data, the set of principles that you want to satisfy become more and more rigid. And what, what people found is that the set of principles is so rigid that you might even contemplate that it could be the case that just trying to combine these principles in a self-consistent way will lead to a unique theory. And so this is, this is a so-called bootstrap philosophy and its most radical and succinct expression was maybe in the 60s uh, by Jeffrey Chu, which, who, who said that nature is as it is because it, it's the only nature that is consistent with itself. So this didn't quite prove uh, correct. In, in a, it seems like we have many, maybe no, still it could be a possibility. But this idea is that uh, the principles of relativistic quantum field theory are so robust that you can uh, I'm just simply trying to combine them, get some very non-trivial results, uh, is very powerful and very popular. This set of principles is very, it's indeed very rigid if you, if you supplement it with some additional input. And this additional input could be um, either some experimental data or set of symmetries that you want to impose. And sometimes, and this is probably example you, you know, the example of 3D Ising model, if you just say that you want to have a three-dimensional quantum field theory with zero symmetry, sort of one relevant operator, it doesn't matter, then uh, it just, uh, and you're right, this is a unique theory and you can bootstrap in this way. And so 
Um, it, the, the truth uh, might be somewhere in the middle. For example, this oldest landscapes, or this idea of landscapes, this day, it, uh, in the last few years, it got in this, uh, this new spin, which is, goes under the umbrella of, uh, uh, say, sometimes called weak gravity conjectures or uh, some, uh, some conjectures which sort of follows from this uh, lamp post reasoning well, basically you look at the landscape you you see that all the landscape theories has some very very special properties and you try to say that these are general principles however it, it also might tell you that just from general principles you can get very very stringent constraints and maybe we will not be, be able to pinpoint uh, the theory uniquely but there are very very uh, robust features that all these theories might share which we still don't understand and so do you have also some new collaborations within Twistmaps or some events you're about to organize? Uh, yes, uh, we together with uh, a postdoc at CERN and uh, Julian Sonner, who is a professor at the University of Geneva, we are organizing a workshop on adv advances in quantum gravity in, I guess in spring 2021, which was supposed, supposed to bring some experts in the field and discuss the latest developments in this active field.